Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to see you all. I am your moderator for today's session, Audra Mitchell of the Massey Learning Institute. And I'm so happy to see that persons have started to share their greetings in each chat because I was about to invite you all to post your shout outs in each chat to let us know where you're from, you know, what company, your business, the territory, your country. So good evening, I'm seeing Ingrid, I'm seeing Lisa, Lisa Christmas, Renisa, good afternoon, Kanisha, good up, evening. Excellent, welcome. Celine, Abby Adon. So welcome everybody. So why are we here today? So today, Nudge and Massey Learning Institute have joined forces for another webinar. And today we are going to be speaking about leveraging technology to grow mindfully made startups. And if you're like me, who didn't necessarily know about startups before and what it meant, a startup is a company or project undertaken by an entrepreneur to seek, develop, and validate a scalable business model. And I found it important to share that, right? Because we do have a mixed crowd of persons in corporate as well as entrepreneurs. So as you can see from the beginning, we're gonna be learning in this session this afternoon. Today's session is also being done in partnership with Youth Business TT, known as YBTT, and the UN. And it is timely as it coincides with Global Entrepreneurship Week, which runs from November the 18th to the 24th. And even more exciting news, a little later on you're gonna be hearing about a great opportunity that the UN is offering to two young entrepreneurs. And that's all I'll say for now, because we're gonna share some about that later on. So it means you need to stay right, right, stay on for the whole webinar to hear that bit of news. So as we step into this conversation, I have the privilege of interviewing and spending the next hour with three distinctive panelists. Now let me tell you who they are. We have Candice Trancoso, a serial entrepreneur, philanthropist, and an occasional blogger and founder of the FinRoot, a business that merges technology and finance to solve financial exclusion and financial literacy. Really excited about that. And we'll hear some more about, about Candice's business and, 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 and what is that problem she's solving. We have Kyle Maloney. Kyle is a tech ecosystem builder and digital marketer and co-founder of Tech Beach. And he is working with Nudge and supporting the foundation of a tech ecosystem across the region. So you can see by the first two that I've introduced already, some powerful panelists, right? So on to our third panelist, Georgina Terry. And Georgina is a passion to profitability expert and director of BPD and Associates, her own business. And she works across corporate career professionals, entrepreneurs, aspiring and established. And she also is a TEDx speaker. So I invite you to go on YouTube to find her, her TEDx speech. So as you see, we have a fantastic lineup and we're gonna use this opportunity to get as much information as possible within this time. So before I get started, I just want to invite you, our attendees, to post your questions in the Q&A and not in the chat. So this will ensure that we don't miss any of your questions, right? Because we really want to ensure that, you know, we hear from you and we respond to as many of your questions as possible. And if somebody posts a question that you like, and it's along the lines of what you wanted to ask, just click like next to that. So that way we can see the types of questions, you know, that, you know, are stirring in your mind and you want to get answers to these. I was about to uh, kind of invite you to use the chat, and I'm glad that we started off using it because we're trying to build community here, right? So feel free, put your comments in, let's hear from you because this is our joint session this afternoon. Right, so now that we've dealt with that, let's get to the meat of the matter. It is no secret that entrepreneurs and MSMEs struggle to grow to scale, as sometimes you really don't know where to start, who to turn to for support, what's available to you, and even the type of technology to support us, right? And this struggle has been made even harder in these COVID times. And with the speed of digital, digitalization, it can be and can feel overwhelming. So with that in mind, I want to start off with our first panelist, Candice. So Candice, I would like to ask you, could you share with us and our audience your entrepreneurial journey and how it all began? 
Okay, thank you, Audra. Thank you, everyone, for having me. It's really a pleasure. Um, I'm, my journey, my entrepreneurial journey really started early for me. And my first registered company was at the age of 17. And at that time, I started learning about product, reading books like The Startup Manual by Steve Blank. And this is where I really started to learn about getting out of the office or getting out of your home, because that's where some of our offices are, and really understanding your customer to tailor the business. And as I, del I delved into technology, I realized that I can supercharge this um, use or the understanding of my customer by using data. And so I started creating data-driven businesses or um, businesses that were, or products that were addictive because I understood the science of my customers, the way they thought, what they were interested in, and I was it was easy to solve their needs. And so we started giving back almost immediately because we wanted to show that technology was an avenue and a tool that can be used for a lot of young business persons. And uh, my journey was a testament to that. So we started a tech incubator with Royal Link Limited. And we had 300 students in our first cohort, creating 15 businesses that really attend, attended to problems in their communities or among their peers. And from then, we continued developing um, other products, uh, such as fintech products. But at the foundation of the path, which was not straight, it was really important that you know, um, we looked at problems and we solved them and, and, on, and realized and highlight the humanity of technology. It can be disruptive and I really um, battle with the word uh, disruptive because it's more of a collaboration with technology. Once we understand that human element and we maintain the humanity and understand that technology is there to help us. So it's been it's been a ride. Um, it's been it has its ups and downs. It's not very glamorous, but that's been my path. Wow, and you know, and I, I took note when you said you started at seventeen, right? Um, you know, so so you've been on this journey. Started at a young age, and and and, I, and you spoke about the use of the data and the use of technology, and really from a very young age, understanding the the value that technology plays. Yeah, right, as, as an entrepreneur and, and, and um, you, you know, as I heard you say that, you know, I'm kind of thinking for persons, did you have a technology background? Was there any sort of, you know, or, or did this just come to you naturally, you know? It's funny that you asked that because my undergrad was in um, international business management. I studied at Kiyofil, mm -hmm. best school ever. And it was, it's not technology based, it's actually a bit more law based, a lot of more law modules. But from the, from really even, even younger than 17, I, I was selling cookies at church functions. And I would use, I would take the pack, the big box that I would buy and separate it into smaller packages. I think I paid $12 at the time. And then I'd, uh, I'd sell each package for five dollars and they only had three in them and so the spirit of uh, business and see and really delivering and understanding um you know that there is a way to uh, solve needs because they were hungry at those functions i i on i got addicted to that high that business high of of doing business <laughs> Right, I hear that. And, and your passion rings true, right? So it seems as if just based on what you shared from a very young age, this was definitely the part you're going to do. You know, and I love how even when you shared, you, you know, you spoke about the humanity and, 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 you know, in terms of responding to needs, right? And really how everything is, is linked. So, it, so that's a very powerful story. So, so, so I'll go over now to Kyle. So Kyle, same question, you know, how did your journey begin? Yeah, my journey, uh, you guys hear me clearly, right? Yes. Just wanted to check. All right, cool. Yeah, my journey began um, really uh, mimicking my dad. 
Yeah, my dad is my dad is is, is weird. I have to say my dad was uh, because he just recently passed away just a few months ago, and so it's just weird saying was. Anyway, so my dad was an entrepreneur, um, and uh, I'm the first of five children. And when you're the first child, it's like you're like the apple of the parents' eye, right? Mommy and daddy kind of thing. And so from really young, um, I just remember my dad had a retail stores in Port of Spain. Um, and he named them after like his kids. So, uh, and so we, we spent a lot of time uh, going between the stores, getting like different shoe sizes and clothing sizes for, for people and it was largely women's clothes. And so we, we, we got that sort of sense of understanding of business and appreciation for working for what you want and, and creating value and, and, and serving people. You know, like I would be on the floor putting the shoes on the women's feet and dad would be like, yeah, good job, son. I'm proud of you, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing. And so, so that, that's sort of like mind frame of service to people. Um, and no, no job is too small because he'd have us cleaning out the store and just getting an appreciation for that how money doesn't just grow off of trees, you know, nothing that you gain here comes just freely. And so I was really happy as I grew older that they were, my parents, both of them, especially my mother, like she's, she was the disciplinarian. She was the one I really had a sweep in, right? So, so, so she really enforced a strong sense of spirituality and discipline in us from a very, very young age. And what I'm remembering here, like my dad had these shoe stores up until the age of 11. And so this is like between the ages of like maybe four to 11, where between these shoe stores and really gaining a sense of like pride and discipline and and, and humility for, uh, and, and, and service to people, you know? Um, and as you grow older, you realize like how important these things are as you get older and you begin seeing how we could have been a different road where like your parents like give you everything that they never had and it yielded not a positive result because you don't get an appreciation for working for the things that are important, you know? So it really began there. And that really sparked a, 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 a drive in myself. And then my brother, my brother is two years younger than, than I am, um, in, in both of us in that way to really go forward and create value. Fast forward to university, Nicholas and I are studying, my brother's name is Nicholas. Nicholas and I are studying aerospace engineering. Um, actually, largely due to my mom. My mom was like, listen, you need to go get a technical degree. You know, you could go do that business thing after, but you need to become an up pilot or you become an engineer you know so and as your standard uh, like Caribbean parent thinking right you need to, to to go get that technical degree right and so she's like you guys are smart boys and you need to know if you need to really put in that work and effort and so so mom was really driving that way and Nicholas and I went to university together uh, Nicholas actually skipped a year when he was in primary school um, and so uh, we ended up going to university at the same time which was a, which was pretty cool um, experience uh, to have somebody to share any experiences with and do your homework for you, you know? I mean, it went both ways. I did his homework too. <laughs> that time. <laughs> right? Um, and then fast forward from university, we started with company in university. And that, that gave us an appreciation for billing you. Uh, in, we went to school in Florida, entering paying taxes. Are you guys hearing me still? I seen. Yeah, you hear me still, right? Yes. Go ahead. I felt yes, like I was breaking yes, up a little bit. Yeah, you will, but but it, it picked back up. So go okay. ahead. We can hear you. All right. All right. Perfect. 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 Yeah. And so this was uh, when we were uh, twenty-one, and he was like nineteen. We started off his company. Um, so a little after Candice, Candice, you know, we we jump on late. It's not quite seventeen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and from there, um, I'm now on my sixth company, um, sold one, failed with one, um, uh, I have three running right now. So, so yeah, that's a bit of my, my, my journey in, in, in summary. Wow. So another very interesting journey, right? I mean, and, and certainly yeah. we, we pay tribute to your dad and, you know, and, 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 and his honor and, and his influence, you know, because that came true. Definitely, very, definitely. So we, so we celebrate him and, and I know he's proud as he looks down and sees you on this and so many, and all the work that you're doing and how you're contributing to and impacting so many lives, right? Thank and, you. I, and, I, 
And I and I love what you shared. You know, I, I you know I heard a lot of the influence of your parents and your values and and your discipline and you know and, and you spoke about humility and serving others, right? You know, so again, I'm hearing mm -hmm. a very common thread in what you shared and what um, Candy shared. You know, in terms of what drives you. So so it's yeah. clear from what you all have both shared. You know that this entrepreneurial spirit started from young, right? Uh, and you had, you had experience in your source. So, so let's go to Georgina now, our third panelist. So. So Georgina, you you are a, a, a passion to profit expert, right? And a business coach. So, so tell us about your journey and how did your journey start? Because it didn't quite start off in an entrepreneurial space, right? Most definitely not. So good evening, everyone. Well, is it evening yet? Kind of ordering afternoon, evening. Um, good evening, Carl. My condolences to you and your family. My heart goes out to you. Um, so yeah, completely very different journey. So um, I didn't become an entrepreneur until I was 38. <laughs> and uh, I started off um, as a, an accountant at 16. I decided I wanted to be an accountant. Um, we were really blessed, my siblings and I, I'm the eldest of four. So I kind of know what it's like to be the eldest um, and carry in that mantle. And, um, but my parents, we were, we were, Really blessed because they 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 shared with us at a very young age we could be anything we wanted in this world anything and the only limitation was in our mind and so at 16 I decided I wanted to be an accountant and I used the word decided intentionally um, because we were told you could be anything you wanted <laughs> so at 16 I decided I would be an accountant even though I was rubbish at maths and um but I was told at a career fair, you didn't need to be good at math. Um, but the interesting thing at 16, when um, I decided to go into that career, what was shared was that the reason I went into finance was because it was flexible. You could be in any industry and be in finance. Boom or bust, you would be able to be working. And it had the flexibility that you could eventually work for yourself, even though that wasn't the aim at the time. But it was a, you know, it was part of one of the reasons going into it, the, the level of flexibility, because I love that reason. So I then worked for The Economist and Coopers, went up as far as senior manager. And I actually thought I would always be in corporate. Um, that's what I was groomed for. And then I decided to change careers and move into the world of change management and coaching. And in doing that, I joined a, a small boutique consultancy and they um, had a, a, a role, no, not a role, a, an assignment in Trinidad. So I so came I for came. two weeks on that first assignment. I've been here 22 years now. So two weeks turned into 20 years. And uh, <laughs> it just kind of extended. It was sort of come for two weeks, finish the assignment, come for, you know, finish till Christmas, et cetera, et cetera. And I stayed at that company for six years traveling around Trinidad, the Caribbean and Africa working. And I decided that after being the company six years, I wanted to move on, but I wanted to actually to, I wasn't ready to go back to Trinidad. I mean, go back to London, sorry. And so I actually started looking for a job, um, but I couldn't find, and at that time I was earning pounds living in Trinidad and therefore I couldn't find a salary <laughs> that was in line with what, what I was used to earning. And uh, so after much deliberation and fear and, and doubt, I decided that I would start my own business. And I thought, you know what, if it doesn't work, I'm an accountant. I've got a skill I could go back to. And um, I started. Now, unlike Kyle and Candice, I don't know, entrepreneurs are not in my family. My father was a biochemist. My mother was a midwife. And... Uh, so I started, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I didn't know anything about marketing, anything about sales. I just knew how to be a really good consultant and accountant. Um, I went and got myself an office uh, and sat there playing with papers, <laughs> making up things, making up for things that I like to make up. So thing what Candace might, no, your customer. No, I knew me, right? I focused on what I wanted, what I liked. And then, but fast forward, um, things started to pick up. Um, I started working with career um, individuals in the career who wanted to advance in their career. 
and then also they moved into corporate because that's my space um doing training change management leadership coaching but in 2008 2009 we had the economic crash everything dried up you know I was, but before that was very lucrative i was working on a contract in with an africa i thought you know i got this thing <laughs> and the crash happened and then as business dried up having no money getting to a point of going to lose my house you know lose my home um, not being able to pay anything that's the other side of entrepreneurship and really you know spending time crying <laughs> wondering what to do how are you gonna you know what can I what can I do and I remember sitting actually in this chair so this is interesting that I'm sitting here with all the moving around today um, that one day I was really I was really crying and wondering what to do and then it just came to me that in the times when it had had troubles before, things had always worked out. And I then realized that the reason things had always worked out is because I wasn't the one in charge. And at that moment, I remembered God is in charge, not me. But I had been taken over the reins. And I said, okay, God, I get it. I'm really sorry. I thought it was all me. I thought Georgina Terry was all that and a bag of chips. And I had to just surrender and just say, if you want me to lose everything, God, so be it. So be it. Um, because I know, you, I know you want more for me. So I just surrender to you. And within a, a, a couple of months, things just turned around. And things have just gone on from strength to strength. You know, the business is really, go, really growing. But this entrepreneurship is i call this entrepreneurship is a walk of faith faith in yourself but more faith in god because that's who we spend most of the time talking to <laughs> and um so you know so this journey has been an amazing journey but the reason this journey is amazing and now you know with covid and everything this has been different because we've you know surrendered to who's supposed to surrender to um, and now my journey is walking with him. That is my entrepreneurial journey now. Wow. Thanks so much for that, Georgina. You know, and, and as you were speaking, I saw both Candice and Cal nodding, right? You know, you, you mentioned it's a walk of faith that I certainly saw. <laughs> they agreed with you. And I remember um, reading an interview that was done with Candice where she, and I quote, being an entrepreneur in the true sense of the word is not for the faint at heart. Right, that was an article back in 2018, an interview you did, 2016, sorry, you know, so, so, and Kyle also, you spoke about starting companies and, and even in terms of um, closing down companies and so, so, so I lost Candice, so Candice, can you speak a little bit about, um, so you have your, your business now, right, so the, the fin route, right, can you speak a little bit about your business and, um, this problem. So knowing that we know that this is a walk of faith, knowing it's you know, but it's but you're clearly passionate about it. Speak about the business and um, you know, your goal, what it is you're trying to achieve, and then and then firstly, and then a little bit about how technology plays a role in that. Okay. To help young entrepreneurs. Okay. All right. Um. Well, the Fin Route is the company of my focus right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several other businesses that I run, but the Fin Route is at the forefront. And my main focus for a very important reason, uh, financial literacy, financial access, financial exclusion are all true problems that exist. And when looking at this problem, especially at the lockdown when COVID started, opening a bank account was absolutely difficult start registering your business and just finding out relevant information was a task my business partner and i took weeks calling we we even decided to um, let's let's call um, one of the institutions and see if we can um get on to them and to this day that was last year to this day we have not received um any new any news any feedback or anything mm -hmm. So with that, even myself ex, um, experiencing it, I realized that this was a problem, not just a problem here in Trinidad, 
um, not where my business partner was in the States. It's a global problem. And so the fin route is now merging finance and technology together. And that co they call that the fintech area, that tech, fintech space. And so it solves financial access, financial exclusion, and financial literacy by offering a user-friendly financial answers. We do um, financial education via school tours. So we are in the secondary schools right now. We have over a thousand plus more students uh, there specifically to learn about their finances because it is a real world um, issue. It's something that is part of life that isn't taught in school. So we decided to integrate ourselves into the school system and we're gonna extend our, our resources to other demographics because we know that there is also a tech barrier, um, a tech literacy problem. So we are hoping to do that as well, but specifically the FinRoute connects financial institution sales teams with the interests um, and readiness to communicate with customers in real time. So no longer would we have those long lines at the bank, no, no long holes and elevator music. We are, and no, no favoritism. No, not because you have a particular status or you're from a particular family that you are favored at these institutions. Everyone gets a fair chance to get their financial goals going and reach those, um, those milestones in every stage of their life. And so we've made this in a really user-friendly way. And we hope to accomplish um, and share financial products and increase financial institutions client to that underserved or unserved market and increase their client acquisition while at the same time helping customers to reach their goals seamlessly. So that's been the thin route. Oh, a real, real world changer. And, and you know anything about it, Candice, as you shared, um, you hear that all the time, right? In terms of the when persons try to go to traditional institutions, financial institutions, right? They don't meet the criteria because you're a startup, you know, your business, you have proven, you know, so what you're sharing is really powerful in terms of your business and what you are, the, the work that you're achieving through this, you know, and um, and the impact, clearly the, the impact is, is will be phenomenal and is phenomenal. And I'm seeing in the chat, you know, that um, persons are, you know, based on what has gone so far, you know, just let me link back to that, you know. So based on what has gone, different storylines, but yet similar faith and passion is truly something else from Abia Dawn. Um, Donna shared, thank you for sharing your real stories. You guys are all warriors, faith, and passion for sure. And Keisha says she loves this. So, so as you were sharing that, Candice, Keisha was saying, I, I really love this. So let's, so let's go to Kyle. So Kyle, um, so for you, so you're, um, you're working on creating a tech ecosystem across the region. And, and you know, and you want to do a lot of work with tech startups. So if, again, because we have a mixed audience, can you tell us what are tech startups and, and how has this journey of creating this regional ecosystem been for you? Yeah, all right. Um, so, so to give you an understanding, first off, to, so we level the playing field as to um, what we're talking about. Uh, a technology startup um, is very different from a small business, right? And so, or small to medium sized business. And it's, it's wording or phrasing that isn't common in Trinidad yet. Um, and so when people think of uh, tech startups in Trinidad, they just still think it's a small business kind of thing, right? And so the difference between a tech startup and like your, your standard SME is that your tech startup is technology enabled and has the ability to potentially scale at uh, a lot more quickly than your standard SME, right? They, they aren't limited by your brick and mortar limitations typically. Um, and they can, they, yeah, they, they can scale to hundreds, thousands, or even millions of people uh, within a very, very short space of time. And so that ability to scale very quickly driven by technology is the definition of a technology of a tech startup, yeah? And so because of its ability to scale so quickly and capture a lot of market share, tech startups typically attract a very unique style of investment, right? 
uh, um, going into a, an angle here just to give an understanding of why uh, you begin hearing that a tech a company, somebody starts a business and then they're able to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars and then millions of dollars very quickly is because of that ability to scale so rapidly, rapidly. And, and that's what investors are buying into. Uh, and that's what the, the, the founders of the companies are really pushing for to really be able to capture that space within a very short space of time. And so that, that in essence, is, is what a tech startup, and that's why it's buzzing a lot. That's why a lot of people are talking about it. That's why the, you're beginning to see the impact of technology through the different applications that we use every day, right? Um, and so on the ecosystem, uh, it, it's, been, it's been an interesting journey because we, we're, we're starting almost like from scratch, like, right? Um, we, we don't have any like de facto major technology leaders in the region or, or didn't have like five years ago when we started. You know, and now we have a few a few companies that are popping up, that are that are covering ground and doing well, um, but they they still need that extra oomph, that extra something that places them within a stratosphere that 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 feels super smooth, super slick, a cust like the apps that we currently use, your, your Netflix, your Ubers, your Airbnbs, um, and 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 has that sort of like regional and potential global impact. And that missing link for these for these uh, founders that are building in the region is uh, that access that access uh, that we cannot that you cannot take for granted when you're building a company in the Miami or your New York or your San Francisco that you have a partner or friend that working at a Facebook or at a Google or at a this and a that you know that could help you and advise you while you're building and then you have a bunch of people who are willing to invest at different stages. You have what they call angel investments, and then you have you have uh, venture capitalists, you know, and so you have access to all of these, what we call the pieces of the ecosystem, right? And then talent, talent is the next big thing. Like you can raise a bunch of money, but then where you're gonna get people to hire, to, to run and run with the business. And so these are the pieces of the ecosystem that, that are fundamentally missing from our region. And so what we've worked really hard to do with Tech Beach is to, I say artificially inseminate, right? Um, but yeah, uh, like bring back or, or give access to uh, our diaspora who really badly wants to participate in, in any progress in the region. Like just, just, just five minutes before this call, I was on a call with uh, a guy who works at a global uh, technology consulting firm called Accenture. He's like, man, I've been following your work and I'm Jamaican and I just really want to figure out how I can get involved. You know, then I got a message from one of the girls who works at LinkedIn and she's training. She's like, oh my gosh, I saw the work you guys are doing. How can I get involved with Tech Beach? And so there's a real strong pull happening right now, momentum happening through our diaspora that really wants to figure out how can we mentor, invest, partner with, work with, potentially work for uh, startups that are solving meaningful problems in the region. And so what we've done with Tech Beach is to become that platform, that conduit that we allow them to engage through multiple ways, through a series of events that we host, through our accelerator program that is structured learning for technology startups. And we're, we're working really hard so that we can eventually be able to begin writing checks to these, to these early stage startups and giving them our own cash to be able to grow. And so, so, so th those there are the pieces, the ecosystem and understanding of how it all comes together and what is required for us to begin seeing our own Ubers and our own Airbnbs coming from the region. Wow. So, you know, with each time, you know, each one of our panelists speak, you know, it, it probably sounds repetitive when I say, wow, because, you know, it's big things that are happening, right? And, um, you know, and, and sometimes we think we're in the Caribbean, and, and you know, and, and you know, we, can, we don't see the ability we have to play on such big scale, you know, and big stages and to impact so powerfully, you know, so that is really exciting. And I want to encourage those who are, you know, who are looking on again to, you know, um, there's a lot of things on, on online with regards to the work the tech teachers doing, you know, and, and, and the recordings of their sessions. So again, I want to encourage you all to tap in. So at this point, I just want to um, encourage the attendees, you know, please post your questions, you know, as you are hearing, you know, as, as I said at the beginning, we have a distinguished panel here, you know, so please post your questions to them. You know, this is your opportunity. Don't let this opportunity go by. All right. You want to hear more? I thought it was interesting. Finn Root, interest in what Kyle is saying. Please post your questions. So I want to ask um, Georgina this. You know, so Georgina, with, with regards to the, so you do coaching for entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. 
So, so what are some of the challenges that you see in terms of young entrepreneurs that are starting up? You know, that they come to you, to, you know, because because clearly they have a passion. They want to step into the space, you know. So, as a coach, what are some of those challenges or roadblocks that you think that that they face? And and and, and I guess the other part of this, you know, is anything it around technology, technology based as, as part of that. Okay, so the first thing is that you know people think that when they've got an idea, that's it. Yes, I'm going to make millions. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, not uh, not on day one. <laughs> right. Um, so first, really, is an idea is not necessarily a business. Um, and Candice touched on this. You know, it's knowing what the, who the customer is and what they want. You know, that's really what's going to drive it. Um, and I'll say, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, do market research, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I say to them, you know, the best market research you can do is find people who want and are willing to pay for what you've got and see if they'll give you their money. <laughs> <All right. laughs> if you think about Shark, even if you've watched Shark Tank, you know, people will come with ideas and they'll say, OK, but how much sales have you made? Because that's really what will, will demonstrate that you've got something that's viable. The first is yes, have the idea, great, but that's not it. That's not, the, that's just the starting point. Figure out who it's for, why they would want it, what's, what's the problem you're trying to solve with this thing? Um, and a lot of times people say, well, I say, you know, who's this for? Everybody. <laughs> it's for everyone, you know? And I'll say, well, if it's for everybody, then you know what? It's actually for nobody. Um, and the reason being, because when you're putting your marketing together, you want to target your target, your target market, who you're going after. So when you're putting your, mar your marketing material together, you're then writing it in service of the person you want to sell to, or you want to serve. Not even, and I intentionally that. You want to serve, because business is about service, right? And if you've then come up with what we call your, your avatar, so that's really coming, bringing the person you want to, that's your ideal client to life. Who are they? Her name is Jane. She's, you know, between 30 and 40 years old. She's got two kids and a dog and she likes to, she likes to go to Florida on holiday and she's, you know, she likes to go to the gym. You know, really bringing that person to life. So when you're putting your marketing material together, that's who you're thinking about. And another important thing is that people start businesses because of things that they like, which is great because I'm all for you need to be passionate about your business. Don't be chasing money. That's the thing. Some people start businesses because I want to make loads of money. But if you want to make loads of money, and that's the reason you're starting a business, then I suggest you go and work for somebody and earn it there. Because this takes time. This takes a lot of time. And when those times are hard, exactly, passions to profitability. And when, when, when time gets hard, it's your passion that's going to slap you in the face and say, let's get going. The money takes, the money will come, but if the business is purely about money, you will get fed up. And I've seen people who've done that. You'll see pe people you see who stop, start, stop, start, stop, start businesses is because the money hasn't come and that's what they're chasing. And so therefore, really understand what are you there to serve? Who are you there to serve? What is the problem? Take the idea, find out if somebody actually, or, if people actually want to buy it and how you'll know is they'll give you their money and don't ask your mum and your dad and your brother and your sister because they love you they'll tell you it's amazing you want to find the people who the products or services for and how they truly going to benefit so it's understanding that and then the next piece is how you're actually going to make money out of this thing how are you actually going to make money right so you're not chasing the money but it still needs to make money a business is something that will generate selling products or services for a profit a lot of people will start will start what they think is a business but what they're actually doing is selling something they're not making and the, the distinction is you, you know you, you're let's say i'm a good you're a good accountant you know how to be a good accountant you find somebody who wants accounting services great but that's not a business when you transition to a business is when you're looking at marketing sales operations all those kind of things data and analytics, as Candice said. So we've got to really be mindful that yes, the service, and we've got to be passionate, we've got to be so passionate about the thing you want to, that you want to serve with, 
that you are so passionate about, you're willing to do the things you don't want to do. <laughs> That's how passionate you've got to be about it. I don't like selling. I don't like marketing. But you know what? I so believe that this product or service can do so, do so much for people that I'm willing to come out of my comfort zone in order to take this to them. My non-passionate self. I agree, agreed, and, and I saw that our audience connected to the passionate, right? And 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 so so we love that because you really have to be passionate about what you're doing, you know, right? That that's a huge part in terms of your success. So we have a couple of questions here. So the first thing I would I would ask is a question that Laverne asked, and she said she can direct it to any one of the panelists, right? And Danica's question was slightly similar, so so I'll tell you this one first. This question is for any of the panelists. How did you get the finances to start your business? So Kyle, could oh, you? I could, I yes, could answer. Yes, great, great. I was yeah, not going yeah, to say, could answer, you could answer, answer that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So my first company, um, we, how did, how do we, how do we get, get cash? Um, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, it was in college. Um, we did like, we did like big sales and uh, selling like, like juice and all that kind of thing. And so it was my first, first company. And we only, we made like three to $4,000. And when in university, that's real money. All right. So you don't, you don't need a lot to live. So that was my first company. But then my se proper, first proper serious company um, was a business that uh, allowed that we are, uh, we uh, worked with, with uh, large corporates to reduce their building energy consumption um, through retrofitting their lighting and their AC. Um, and, and that business in particular, um, I was blessed to have it begin with my uncle who had a, 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 an initial contract. Um, and and uh, we put forward a, a deal structure to say, uh, to our, our large corporate client to say, listen, um, we will finance the first execution of, of it and once it works well uh we will then we will then have a master service agreement that we will do the rest of the buildings and so and so once they agreed to do that we were able to like borrow money from some friends and from some family based on showing the contract that we had to to raise to execute the first level of contract um and then we we're able to pay them back with some interest and so realistically uh, that's exactly how they say you, you begin, right? You begin first, first by by the people around you that you could build some trust in, and, and sometimes not even you're not. Some people, a lot of people, don't have access to even that, you know. And so, and so, that's the unfortunate thing. And so, uh, there are a, a, there are a few different resources available locally, whereby you can get small loans to facilitate uh, your business at, at different stages. Uh, if you do have access to any friends or family that can can lend you any kind of money, that would be meaningful. Um, but I was blessed to be in a position that that I could borrow, and, and I'm not talking about like lots and lots of money here. But I mean, lots is relative, right? Like Donald Trump said, uh, I got a, a small loan for my dad of a million dollars, right? So <laughs> I definitely wasn't a small loan of a million dollars kind of thing, right? So so small, so small is relative. Um, uh, but but yeah, uh, that's that's how it was for me, and, and we're able to to build and grow from there. And it worked well, we executed well, and then I was able to get a really sizable contract there after that. That was able to give us some cash to to move forward. So um, I was in a I guess in a blessed position relative to some, but then relative to others, yeah, I didn't have necessarily like that much access, you know. Yeah. Great, thanks, Kyle. Audrey, do you mind if I say something? Sure, sure, Georgina. Great. That's a that's a question a lot of people ask. You know, you know, mm -hmm. where did you get money to start the business, and you know, where can I get a loan? And um, and from my from my perspective, that before you want to get someone else to put money in your business, you need to put your money in your business because you know if you're not prepared to put it in, then why why should some why would someone else why do you want someone else to do it? And so what I say to clients is start small, have an, have an amazing idea, right? Get that idea, make sure that idea becomes viable as a business opportunity and have an amazing vision. But then create, what I say to clients, create the baby version. 
create the baby version of that business. Because by creating the baby version, it mean it needs a minimum amount of investment. An investment, and let's look at Carl said he, you know, they found a way to, you know, sell cookies, etc. It's a minimal, um, um, minimal amount to start a, your business, the small spot start of your business, just to get it started. That way, what that does, it proves that the idea is a potential business opportunity. You've proven to yourself, you don't want to then take out like a huge loan or something like that and then find out the business falls over. Start small, put what you can into it, let it prove itself. And after it's proved, proven itself, you can then reach out and then look for more investment later on. But a lot of people don't want to start a business because they're looking for someone else to put money into it for them. Find a, create the baby version of your business. Make it, make sure it works, that it's solid. And also when it's a small business, when I, when I say small, micro, 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 then if you put money into it, you, do, you lose small. You don't try and get a huge loan and then lose big. So don't let the money be the limitation. Think about how do I create, how do I get this started, but in the smallest possible way to get it moving, to prove that this thing works. Yeah, I agree with that entirely. So that's, yeah, that is the next thing. The next thing is most people uh, have, have a job and they start their business on the side. And, and, and the reason for that is because just the practicality of it, right? You need that job as a cash cow to be able to get that cash going uh, to invest in your own business. And, and at any day, like people want to see that you, two things, they want to see traction and even, and, and in addition to traction, they want to see that you're really committed to this thing because it could be a really good idea, but you could just be a sucky entrepreneur, you know? And so you wouldn't get the support that you need because you're just not committed, you don't know enough about it, you're naive about mm. you, the, the problem that you're going after and the competition and that sort of thing. And so it's really important that you spend the time and do the work and create a really good plan by doing the research so that when you begin speaking to people about it, they realize that you have such an in-depth understanding about the problem you're going after and the solution and you've demonstrated some traction, even though it might be small, you'd be surprised at how quickly people wanna be like, nah, use the man. Use the guild, use the woman. I gave you my money. Take it, take it, take it. Go and figure it out. You know, and and yes. and, and I've I've seen that happen time and time again, where entrepreneurs that really know their business and know the customer and understand how to to to, to generate the impact that they're trying to generate, uh, are able to just quickly raise money and 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 uh, in, in whatever forms. That's why they say that an entrepreneur who's who's on their third or fourth time. Uh, even though they would have failed on their first couple of businesses, but he said for a time, like there's so much in tune to like where the problems are, understanding the business, what's going on, that sort of thing. And investors uh, within that, 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 that I've built relationships with, they say things like, I don't want to, I don't want to invest in a founder on their first time. Give me a founder who's failed four or five times. And I, I, that, that's who I want. That is who I want. The founder who's, who's messed it up and, and really think that he's down and out, but he's coming back on his fourth time. That's who I want. You know, so, so, yeah, that's the sort of mind frame that you need to have going into it. I hope you guys heard Brilliant. me clearly. Yes, we did. Don't worry so, about my internet connection. No, thank you. And, 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 and great, great on. So thank you for that and, and even what Georgina shared. So we have another question here from Cyan, and this one I'm going to direct to Candice. What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs aiming to increase their visibility? And how do you get your startup ideas out there? Okay, that's a really good question. And I would start with um, even the question from before by giving a bit of a real world application and just sharing my experience. So when I started, it was a young age, but I grew up in the deep east of Trinidad and that's um, the countryside, so I'm a country girl. And although my, my upbringing was humble, I didn't, we, I didn't have a lot to lean on. I did take away something that was very important that is a key element of entrepreneurship. And that was, for example, if my neighbors had avocados or sabacas and I had plantains, they had plantains and I had sabacas. 
that spirit of community and the element of humanity is a integral part in every business. And so there is where you start to communicate with your potential client by giving value. When I started, we had to do a lot of pro bono stuff. And I looked at it as paying my dues. And it was not as if I was paying something out of me. I really felt like I was receiving because I was gaining a lot of experience dealing with a lot of people. And so in that area, even going further, when we really started to realize that we needed more money and we needed finance, we needed to buy laptops and, and um, material and e equipment for our business, we looked, my sister and I, with, with Royal Link Limited, we looked at um, NipDeck. Uh, sorry if I called the name, but we did go there. It's a state enterprise. And one of the requirements was a three year pay slip or um, statement. And we have to understand the system itself has to understand that entrepreneurs most times are in a position where this is their um, sole income, this is what they're doing solely, um, or it's their last resort. And the, the, the requirements for financing or even growing is absolutely ridiculous. And so we, 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 we experienced those hurdles. And to the question, how do you really get out there and, and start marketing and reaching a particular audience? You have to add value. You have to give something. You have to let persons understand that this is who I am. This is what I can give. And this is how I can make your life in, um, better. This is the value of my product. Tell me what you think about it. Even if it's a physical product, we, we have persons giving out samples and those things. Those things work because you are creating a relationship with your audience, with your customers, your, your potential customers. And eventually there's a, a percentage that buys in and they're not just buying in with their money, they're buying in with their loyalty. And so you move from having followers and customers to having a community. And so that's, that's one key area that I, I'd like to add. Um, building a community, building that. And we see a lot of people doing that with social media now. Um, and so I would encourage to use as much of these um, tools that are available. Uh, and another thing I would suggest is the Lean Canvas to test the business um, and make sure that you are getting, um, you are testing the product properly. You understand your competitors, you understand your market, um, but really getting in the face of a lot of people, get on as much of those um, visibility or social media tools and learn how to use it. It's not just social media. It is an avenue for you to communicate with your clients or potential clients. And so you have to understand the data behind it. It's not fun and games, it's actually work. You have to understand the science of the human behavior, what makes them click, what makes them press buy, what makes them engage, send a message or talk to you directly, what makes them leave their homes and come to the store. All those things are important. And it's not, it's not create your product and then understand the human behavior. It's the other way around. You understand the human behavior and, and their ability to interact with a product like yours. And then you tailor your product, shift it ever so slightly to match that, to make sure that you are speaking directly to them and they feel that type of connection. And then eventually I'm 
there is a, a sense of evangelism um, behind your product because these people are now going with you and they understand your story and they've been there from the beginning and that loyalty really just ties back in. So that's some ways to increase visibility and really push and, and um, boost your business. Okay, thank you so much for that, Candice. I mean, there's so much interest and, and, and the questions are coming in. And, and you know, when your session is going so good, the time runs out kind of quickly. So Candice, as you're on the floor, I just want to ask you if you could just speak, you know, because there are a lot of questions around the, you know, the, the financing and opportunities, right? So can, can you speak a little bit about the, about the grant? You know, the, there's a grant opportunity we have for two young entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. This is, this has had me going and excited for a long time. You see, entrepreneurship in the Caribbean has been an uphill battle uh, for most. I am one of them. And I started to do some research. And so in 2020, the World Bank noted that Trinidad Tobago was ranked at 105 in the Ease of Doing Business Index. And Barbados and other islands ranked similarly around that 128 area. And we see, we see and experience 51% of new businesses in the Caribbean struggle and then ultimately fail due to the pressures of technology and its advancements, international competition, the lack of funding, the lack of mentorship, and the inability to access the knowledge of their their fields, their ever-changing markets. And sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So we have all those happening. And then with the, with, with the pandemic, we saw unemployment and underemployment rates rise. And so we, we see many young people venture into entrepreneurship as an avenue to, to, to exercise some type of change in their lives. And but they also need assistance because of the aforementioned issues. And so the limitations in that demographic that they face affects not only them and their livelihood and their, their communities, it affects our economy. And then we see a brain drain in the region, people leaving, and, and it's just a discouragement for all young people to even re-enter or re-engage in entrepreneurship because of those um, hardships. And so this grant really is a, a solid mark and, and, and really gonna make a difference because we have the opportunity now to change lives and really make a difference because we are giving that $1,500 US grant to an entrepreneur, to entrepreneurs who who ex display passion and the drive. I call it, um, I go a bit further and I call it bad mind, a bad mind to succeed. It's a bit after drive to really make sure that their company has the ability to grow. And so I'm grateful for the collaboration with Nudge and the UN Trinidad and Tobago to have this level of impact now, it's not just giving the money to persons who apply. Persons do have to be registered. Um, you have to register, click the link and register to be part of it. You have to be operating for at least a year. You don't have to be registered, just operating. And also there is a pitch competition. So you have to pitch your product and we're looking at five companies um, at that pitch. So it is a, a remarkable opportunity. I think it's really going to be a stepping stone for those that are successful. And it, it is open for youth, that is anyone below the age of 35. And I'm excited for those persons to come in because we have a lean canvas and mentorship training with me as part of the of the program and the, the path to the grant. And I cannot wait to see what is going to take place from here. I know for sure that we're gonna have some really impactful and great companies benefiting from this grant. 
Great, thank you, Candice. You know, and, and I see there's additional information what Candice has shared has been put in the chat, all right, in terms of how you can access it. And we want to stress that this grant is open to everyone across the Caribbean and the, some of the criteria that um, Candice just shared as well, in addition to what she shared. So the other thing that I want to do, because the time has quickly run out on us, you know, plus we were having so much fun, is I want to ask Carl to speak a little bit about the community engagement platform, you know, because as we realize that, you know, there's huge value in being part of a community. And, and this is for budding and existing entrepreneurs where we can build support. So, so Carl, can you speak a little bit about the, the community engagement platform? Can you hear? Mic right. check again. Yes, now hearing you. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing you now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. All right. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you guys hear me clearly, right? Yes. Now hearing you. Yes. Kyle, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm hearing you loud and clear. I'm not sure what happened there. I went out and in. Yes, no problem. So please uh, share with us good. about the platform. Um, we want to hear about that as well. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm super, super excited about the platform, quite frankly. Um, because, because I understand the power of community See, in it being able to tackle problems together, sharing your wins, sharing your failures, uh, um, and sharing different approaches that taking so that you feel so um, um, Kyle? many very lonely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you're breaking up. Can, can I ask that you just take your video off? Because we're hearing you, we really yeah. want to hear what you have to say, but it's going on comments. So you don't want to miss a bit of, of what you're sharing. Yeah, I know. That's why I had it off all the time. So I could have nope. stayed in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No problem. Go ahead. We're hearing you. Yeah, yeah you're hearing me? Yes, all right, we're perfect, hearing you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so yeah, being able to share the share challenges, share wins, share losses, share the experiences, I think. I think people underestimate the power of community and 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 and, and how coming together uh, enables people to really have like stronger impact, you know. Um, and so and so this is what we're we're essentially trying to accomplish with uh, the launch of this this Nudge Community online platform. It is it is it is meant to be a center for entrepreneurs to come together to share in their wins, share in their losses, share in the approaches that they're taking so that, so, that we be, so that we have an approach that builds on top of each other versus every man for himself sort of thing and, and, and this sort of like closed, closed siloed approach that we take home here. I, I, really want, I really want entrepreneurs to begin thinking about the world as their oyster and be, being able to, to tap into to, to global types of, of opportunities, even if you're like, I guess it may be less applicable if you're doing like maybe a restaurant, but then maybe you can think, begin thinking of like distributing products, you know? Um, but definitely if you're in, in the space of like selling, distributing clothing and, and that sort of thing, uh, you, be, you can begin thinking about how can I begin tapping into, into a global population of people that are purchasing. Um, and so, Nudge has a, a few entrepreneurs that are already already doing those things, which I think is really amazing, right? Like Keegan, Keegan Simon, uh, the individual brand, and um, and Catherine Nurse with 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 her brand as well. That's really really amazing, like super high quality. And so so I want the whole the, the community platform really is meant to bring people like these together, uh, so that we can share any learnings uh, and, and and the content that we're putting together as well. I think is is really powerful. It is an amalgamation of content that we as entrepreneurs are looking for uh, with the localized context uh, all the time, like, uh, like trying to make decisions on what, which bank to, to, to get your credit card with or best loan or supporting your e-commerce or, or how to market your business or how to validate your business idea. Having a, lot of those, having a lot of those questions answered in one area, one platform, 
is not something that currently exists. And so why this is why I'm really, really excited about it. Um, and and yeah, this is this is really what the platform is about. Hopefully, um, I didn't leave anything out and I did it justice. I feel like I'm hearing Marilena tapping me on my shoulder, at telling me, hey, you should talk about this other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, from where we sit, you know, you shared a lot of great stuff. And I think it's really exciting because we can see from all the questions and the comments, there's really a lot of interest in the space. And also our attendees and, and persons having an opportunity to be a part of the platform to really get the support and get the knowledge and answer some of these questions and, and grow together is an amazing yeah. opportunity. So, yeah. so thank you for that. And, and I guess I want to tell the audience as well, Cal, we, we want to thank you because you just got in from a flight and you joined the webinar, right? So we know you must be tired, but your passion and your excitement comes in, comes through. So thank yeah, you for that. Nothing can stop me from being here, okay? Ah, great, great, great. <laughs> so, so, so I'm hoping that that means that for you, Candice and Georgina, because certainly we need to have a part two or even a part three, right? There's so much excitement that, that mm -hmm. when we invite you back, that you would all be back. Definitely. Definitely. Great. So, um, you know, this time has come, you've come to the end of our session. You know, we thank you for your questions. We thank you for your participation to our attendees. Special thank you to our panelists, you know, for taking the time to share your insights, your personal stories, your experiences, because I'm sure that for many persons on the, on the, on, in this session, you know, they've, they're walking that journey, you know, so what you would have done is give them some encouragement. I saw some comments even around providing some motivation to persons, you know? Um, so, you know, because at the end of the day, it is a rewarding journey. And I'm hear it in your voices. Each of you shared, you know, you're doing big things and your passion is showing and the excitement is there, you know? So, so there is a huge reward in this journey. So I'd also, so again, like to thank our panelists. I'd like to thank our production team, Smart Vibrations, Lasan Adiola, and Stefan who worked with us. I'd like to thank the MLI team, all these teams that worked behind the scenes. And just to share with you that the grant opportunity for youth is powered by Nudge Caribbean in partnership with United Nations Trinidad and Tobago. And you can follow Nudge on IG, on Facebook, on Twitter, and LinkedIn at Nudge Caribbean. We look forward to seeing you at our future engagements. And um, we have your questions here so we can, we will try for those of you that registered and attended you know we, we're going to get your questions and send back responses but for any questions that wouldn't with we didn't have time to answer sorry because the time went so quickly so great having you all thank you all for attending and please you know we want to see in our future sessions the entrepreneurship journey is an exciting journey a rewarding journey and this is a time when the entrepreneurship for me is a disruptor right traditional businesses you know, they still have their place, you know, but we're an environment and a space for big and new and creative and innovative things to happen. So take care, everybody. Please be safe. For those of you in Trinidad, enjoy your Diwali holiday tomorrow. Bye, everybody. All right. Thank you.